Due to technical difficulties, our regularly scheduled Sunday broadcast was delayed. To all of our faithful, believing viewers, subscribers, and patrons of our online and in-person worship service, Shiloh would like to offer our sincerest apologies for the delay and any worship time inconvenience we may have caused. <laughs> Pray. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. And when you pray, pray 
be not as the hypocrites. For they love to pray, stand and pray in synagogues and in the streets and on the street corners that they may be seen of men. I'm reading an ASB version this morning. Verily I say unto you, they shall have, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy inner chamber. Yes, sir. And having shut the door, pray to thy father who is in secret. And thy father who is who seeth thee in secret shall reward thee in open. And in praying, use not vain repetitions as the Gentiles do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them, for your father powerful knoweth what things you have need of before you even ask. Somebody say God knows. Go to be verse 25 of this text. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, but you shall eat, but you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than food, and the body more than raiment? Behold, the birds of the heaven, they don't sow, neither do they reap, neither gather in barns, and your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than them? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit unto the measure of his life? And why are you anxious? Be not anxious. Take no thought concerning raiment. Consider lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. But if God does so close the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, take no thought. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherever shall we be clothed? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Let's pray. Father God, again standing in your presence, what a joy to know that you have made a promise as you tabernacle here with us this morning. You are a God who hands out blessings. You are a God who sees the needs. You are a God who understands the pressure everyone is going through. So Lord, I ask you to design this word to touch somebody's heart. The fallow ground is being broken up. Prepare a space that they may receive your word and be healed. We'll be careful, Lord, to give you all the glory and honor for what you've done. That's right, God, what you've done, because we know you won't fail. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. For as long as the Spirit of the Lord will allow, we're going to speak from the thought, what do you think about that? What do you think about that? Everyone who was here last week say nothing. Today we're adding a caveat, part two of this message, what do you think about that? You have the power. You've got the power. If you can, turn to a neighbor, you might be sitting next to a relative. You sit next to somebody who looks mean. Hopefully they got the mask on and you can't see it. Me. Turn to him and say, don't touch that thought. <laughs> Turn to another and say, don't touch that thought. <laughs> One of the most famous lines in literary history comes from a novel by Charles Dickens called The Tale of Two Cities. It's a, it's a phrase or a quote that you've heard many, many times and I just want you to get a background of understanding of it because it sounds very paradoxical and contradictory. But when you know what was going on, you understand how it fits the occasion. It goes like this. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was a season of light. It was a season of darkness. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. It was the spring of hope and the winter of despair. We were all going direct to heaven, but we were all going direct to the other place. Listen to the paradox then. It was the best of times, but at the same moment, it was the worst of times. It was the season or the age of wisdom, and also it was the age of foolishness. Uh, it was the epoch. Epoch just means 
uh, ex explanation of a situation, the epoch of belief, but it was also the epoch of incredulity. Incredible things was happening. It was a season of light and a season of darkness. It was the spring of hope, but it also was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going straight to heaven, but we were all going straight to the other place. If you listen, what caught me as I was going into this message and praying before the Holy Spirit, God told me, look at that verse, that that verse explains some things about a situation and how we think. Because it also can be applied to us. First of all, the two cities in the tale of two cities is about London and Paris, the turmoil of the French Revolution. In the revolution, they were both in a war, birth in the revolution, but the rich folk had everything and the poor folk had nothing. The contrast, the paradox. But as I said, it can also be used for us. Think about it. Because here's what the Holy Spirit said to me, two people can be in the same position, the same situation, the same pain, the same hurt, and yet these two people, one will be sitting there in despair. He will keep you 
in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Don't forget it in because he trusts in him. See, perfect peace does not mean nothing's going on. Perfect peace means I trust God. Oh, y'all didn't feel that one. All I'm saying to you is don't sit here and tell me you don't have peace. Okay, I can deal with that. But please sit down and tell me the peace that I do have comes from the fact that I'm trusting. I'm trusting God to be there for me. So what I need you to understand this morning, you ought to, you ought to make sure that you understand how the thoughts that I think can either take me in a direction of bringing pain into my life every day. You go week after week, and you could have thought differently, and you wouldn't have to suffer any of that anxiety and stuff. You don't thought yourself in. Look, I told you, look, you get a pain and think it's a heart attack. Yeah. It probably was, it probably was that pork you ate. tells us explicitly that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So I say mighty, but mighty through God. Casting down, I mean, uh, pulling down strongholds, casting down imagination. See, here's what God is saying. You thought a thought, and then you took it all the way to the emergency room. It ain't nothing happened yet. But the thought Every thought captain. That's right. it's just, the, 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 the words are not just poetical. No, no. Uh, the words are literal. He said, You can take a thought, hold it captive, and say, Get out of my head. Right. You ain't got to dwell on that thought. You can take that thought and hold it captive. What am I doing to hold it captive? I'm going to bring it uh, into the obedience of Jesus Christ. Meaning that uh, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Here's how some of the devil exalts his negative thoughts against God. He comes at you knowing you're blessed and will tell you it's not going to work. But now you got to capture that. And you got to bring it back to him and say, my God said the best is yet to come. The devil is telling you it's going to be over today. But my God said he gets ready to renew my spirit. They went out to 
spy the land. Ten came back with a bad report. Two came back with a good report. The ten that had the bad report looked at their language, and you can tell that's how they were thinking when they got there. They said, we saw the land. It had all these big grapes. It had fruit. It was, it was a, a nice green uh, vale in the valley. It was a beautiful land. And yet, but we saw giants. Yeah. 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 What giant? It's greater than my God. We saw giants. But here's the bad part. In verse 33, he said, and we saw ourselves as grasshoppers, grasshoppers in our own sight. And mess me up. He said, we saw ourselves as grasshoppers in the enemy didn't see you as a grasshopper. Your thoughts saw you as a grasshopper. That's why you couldn't win. But go to verse 30. Caleb jumped up and said, whoa, whoa, why are y'all making all that noise? I'm giving you James W. And the Bible said he steals the people. But y'all know how we got to talk to the hard folks. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. With all God done done for us, why y'all acting like that? Why are you sitting in church looking at that? You don't know my God can do it again. Can I get a do it again, God praise? Don't sit in here making sure that God won't do it. Watch this. He said, Moses, he got the people to talk to Moses. Believing when 
when you choose life, it makes the life of everybody around you better. Because you're walking in positive thought. I said earlier, don't go to nobody's house you know is a negative thinker. They'll put that message rub off on you. They ain't never got nothing good to say. They ain't never smiling. I have never in the world seen nobody come into the house of God, anointed flowing everywhere, and you sit up there like ain't nothing going on. Got a frown on your face. Where the fuck like me? I just got to move. And I think about the goodness of Jesus. And the fact that I'm, some of y'all made it through a hard week, a hellish week, a hellish night. You better give God some glory for what he's already done. Don't sit there and give the devil no praise. Do you realize when you look at prayer, 
and God gave us an ability to talk to him. Do you realize, watch this, prayer is the only mechanism God left here that we can reach in. That's right. You can't talk to God any other way except by praying. And sometimes we'll be sitting in here, we'll talk to everybody else except God. Thank you, Lord. We'll get on the phone, I want a prayer chain. Well, before you get a prayer chain by your brothers and sisters, go pray by yourself in your secret closet so God can bless you. We think prayer, oh, oh yes, prayer. That's why I told you. So many Christians looking around, God, uh, I need y'all to pray today. Who me pray? No. I can't pray. That's crazy. Yes, you don't ever talk to God and don't wonder why your blessings are here because you don't give God any time. Helps us get something from God yeah. that helps us get in touch with God, with God. Yeah. and helps us touch bases to God. Yeah. Look, here's what God is saying. If you don't pray, I can't help you. Yeah. And yet, I know believers that have been saved a long time, you never invested into a prayer life. Woo. You pray none, you pray 911 prayer. The kind of prayer that says, God bless me, but I don't want you. Woo. I don't want you, God. I just want to be better now. Yeah. God, oh, everybody pray. Everybody, oh, Lord. But you don't want God. Do you know the best prayer for you is you? I may be what you need, but God said you got to learn how to pray. And it's right here in this text, right, verse 5. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. They pray standing in synagogues and in the corners of the street that they might be seen. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou and thou pray in thy closet. And when you shut the door, pray to the Father in secret. He'll bless you in public. And when you pray, use not vain repetition. First thing you want to understand is prayer is our greatest weapon. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You can't get anything from God until you pray. When you go to the 7th chapter of this same Sermon on the Mount, Jesus kicks this off in verses 7 and 8 in Matthew 7. He tells us the simplicity and yet spiritual dynamite in prayer. Matthew 7 Verse 7 and 8 said, ask and it shall be given. See and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. What well, messes me up is when it says, everyone who asks, receive. Everyone who seeks. Oh, did y'all hear that? I'm not making this up. Everybody who seeks, you must not have been seeking if you haven't gotten anything yet. You must not have been asking if you have not because you ask not. And the Bible said, everyone who knocks, the door will finally be Open, but the reality of this chapter is that there is three motives outlined in those three verses for your motive for praying. Uh, one of them is bad, it's wrong. Two of them will give you power. The first one is verse 5. Verse 5 said, don't be a hypocrite when you pray. So that means you asked because he said when you do that, you already have your reward. Say with me, some of y'all, when you pray, you think that's the reward. Well, I prayed about it. Okay. But now you're looking for God to do something, but you already have your reward. Because what happens, you pray what you don't really believe. Because the first kind of prayer identified is unbelief prayer. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, you want your reward down here. And still think God will you. You know what I'm talking about? You say, well, I prayed about it, and you'll be in nothing happened. So now you walk around church looking all sad, but somebody feels sorry for you. And somebody asks you what happened, you say, well, I prayed. Uh -huh. I prayed about it. Did people mess you up? Because they help you with them negative thoughts. of this second uh, part that we're preaching from right now. And that is, God is telling us, go into your secret closet. Yes, Believe in prayer. Yes. And watch blessings come. There are some folk in this place that can tell you, they look around and don't know when God did it. But didn't God answer your prayer somehow? What this is saying, don't just ask, seek. That's what's wrong with y'all. You got to hold some bad doctrine. Come on, pray one time and then stand in faith. No, you got to pray and seek.
is health. All in one. His wife said, curse your God and die. Boils all over his body from head to toe. Had to scrape himself in the pot here. And yet when they asked Job, Job said, oh, what, what, what? I know my Redeemer lives. And I'm going to see him again. When you're in the middle of something, it ain't coming to pass. There ain't no reason to quit. There ain't no time to give up. That's the time for you to start shouting. My God has not failed me. And he will give me if I just have
got friends that you just talk nasty to. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Anyway, you got some friends. Wow. You want God to be nice to you and you're nice to God said you got to change. So you can knock. So God said, I need you to keep knocking, but as you knock, I need you to change when you're knocking. I'm sorry, God. Help me, God. I need you, God. Don't just stand up there arrogant trying to get a blessing. So what you need to understand is God is saying, if you do that, I will bless you. Let me go this here. It's like Luke 18, verse 1. Remember that? It was the unjust judge and the widow. Remember, the, the judge said, I don't fear God, and I don't fear no man. Right. Don't nobody tell me what to do. But this widow said, you better come avenge me. And then she said, I'm coming every day. Y'all see her? Knocking on his house early in the morning. Just said, Daddy, there she go again. Knocking on the door in the evening. Running around, he in the grocery store. She sneak up behind him. Are you going to get there yet? He walk out there, he getting gas. And there she is again. I need you to avenge me. What I'm trying to say is Jesus was telling this parable to his disciples on how to keep knocking and get your blessing. Because if you look at verse 5, look what the judge did. The judge said, this woman has been for me so much. No, he said, I'm going to have to bless her. Because she keeps showing up. Then in verse 6, Jesus said to her, look at verse 6, you, did you hear what that judge said? He said, that's the same thing I'm going to do for my children that keep on knocking, yeah. that keep showing up. And then he said in verse 8, he said, but I hope that when I show up, I find you in faith. Here's what God is saying. You stop knocking, I show up with your gift, and you want I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop till I get my blessing. He said, in that eight, the verse, uh, verse one says, men ought always pray and not faint. That word faint said, if you pray, you won't give up. But you got to keep praying. Let me, let me close this thing. Come on up here, we're going to Let me take this down. So I'm going to close. I'm only going to do this one point today. But then he said in verse eight, which I blew my mind, he said, but pray because your father already knows what you need. That is a shout right there. God is telling you, you didn't, you didn't know what you need before I knew what you needed, so I made sure I'm making what you need. All you got to do is keep asking for it. And then, I like what he said, God instructs us to pray at all times. First Thessalonians 5, 17. Pray without ceasing. You gotta, somebody said, it ain't happening for me. That don't, that's your signal not to stop praying. Amen. And to keep believing. And then, so God said, how do I get the power? I'm closing here. Luke Chapter 11 is the same scenario as in chapter 6 of this text. But it tells us about the power and why, how the prayer came to be. His disciples went to him and said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. So we've been watching you since we've been with you. You leave off early in the morning, you go somewhere and pray, then you come back and sneak away from us and pray again. And if that prayer gave you power, you open blind eyes and you heal the lame and the sick. So we want that power. Can you they figured out that prayer was the power. Yeah. Yeah. Say, so can you teach us to pray to the Father so we can get that? I'm talking about prayer, y'all. And all of a sudden, Jesus said, yes. That's why it says, and Jesus said, pray like this. Understand, the Lord's Prayer is not a prayer for you to pray. It's a good prayer, but it's a prayer that gives you an outline to follow for praying. Many of you don't pray because you're scared. You don't know how to pray. Jesus left you an outline for praying. Someone has broken this down to the acronym ACTS. A-C-T-S. A-C-T-S says, whenever you get on your knees, all you got to do is go into adoration. For sure. See, we want to we wanna ask up before we even praise him. Yeah. You got to worship him first. Then he said, confess. Whoa. So confess all that mess in your heart. Oh. Trying to get a prayer through and you ain't confess nothing you've been through. Yeah. I know mean, y'all don't like me now. We're going to hear that. You're sitting up there trying to get something. You ain't, you ain't even confess all the mess you need to confess. Yeah. And then he said, have some thanksgiving. Yeah. Be grateful yeah. for what you got.
may not be something we rarely do because it's an old English word, but the word supplication in the Latin is called supplicare, and it means to go before God with a humble spirit. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Maybe you ain't got your prayer because you go mean and you demand oh. instead of going go humble. Oh. Yeah. God said, come before me humbly. Let you know who I is you're praying to. Understand that I'm a God who loves you so much that all you got to do is ask me right. Yeah, right. They don't know how many stuff our kids come to us all flipping. Yeah. They about to get wrapped right across the mouth. Yes, I know I'm living in, in an age of, of you know, uh, what do they call it? I don't even know how to do it because we didn't do that with our kids. Uh, time out. Well, you need time to go get a bed made. tells us prayer and supplication go together. Yes. Philippians 4 6 Be careful for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication, that your request be made known unto God, the peace of God, which passes understanding, understanding shall keep us. Come on, give God a prayer, a praise right now. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Pray. Don't look at prayer the same way. It's the only mechanism to reach God. When you can't do nothing else, you can pray. And pray will open up doors that nothing else can open. Is there anybody here that says, Pastor, I'm not saved. I need salvation. We're not that much you heard. We can't do that. Is there anybody in this place right now that's backslidden and saying, I need a prayer. I'm having nightmares. I'm having trouble. I got some spiritual warfare going on. We will pray with you. Is there anybody in this place that says, I need a church home? God never wants us to walk around as vagabonds, as orphans. He said you ought to be in church under someone's authority, under recovery, so you can use your gifts. If you say, Pastor, I need uh, seeing no hands for all three of those. Everybody stand to your feet. Let's look to the Lord. Give God praise for the word today. With no way up And I needed some help Everybody Breathing but not living Just existing Well, and I needed some help Somebody told me that Jesus Will set you free 